stand up to your feet this morning. If you get an opportunity, go ahead and share this service. Get it out to your friends. Be a witness to somebody in your life. And God is good. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask or think. up this morning he started us on our way I am grateful to be in the house of the Lord come on how many is grateful to be in the house of the Lord just put your hands together come on I believe that everything is getting better that God is working on our behalf God is working behind the scenes it might not look perfect right now but God is doing something special for us amen Sing this is already it's already getting better it's already getting easier God's already moving on my behalf I said it's already it's already getting better it's already getting easier God's already moving on my behalf 
been, I've been serving, I've been dancing, I've been praying, I've been giving, I've been serving, I've been dancing, I've been praying, I've been giving, I've been serving, I've been dancing, I got God on my side and in these times. We're going to start with John chapter 14 and verse uh, number 5 and 6. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we understand and recognize who you are, that you are the Son of of God. So we praise you today. We worship you today. We thank you for giving your life that we might have eternal life. So we bless your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name we pray. Help us to receive the word of God in our spirits today. May it land on good soil. In the name of Jesus we pray. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome your pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. Somebody put your hands together. It's good to be here. Raise your hands and let's just plead the blood. Lord, we just thank you for the blood. Somebody shout the blood. The blood of Jesus that covers our lives today, covers our families today. You said when I see the blood, I will command the death angel to pass over. I will command the devourer to pass over. I will command the destroyer to pass over. Thank you for the blood of Jesus in every area of our lives. Thank you for everyone that's watching my live stream. Thank you for those that are on Zoom. Thank you that you will cover them by your blood. On this day, cover our children. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Would you welcome Minister Adam Ariano as he leads us in prayer, praying for our children. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, it's good. But good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. I mean, there's no place I'd rather be than to be in the house of the Lord. If y'all can't understand that, somebody got to wake you up. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say, wake up. We in the house of the Lord, baby. Let's pray together as we lift up our children. You know, our children are our future. Our children are, let's, let's cover them in the blood, amen. Father God, we just come before you to find presence. Lord, we lift up all of our children to you today, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would protect them with a seven-layer hedge of protection, Father, that no hurt, harm, or danger would befall, befall them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Protect them on their way about their going, Lord, to school, to summer school, to college, through vacation. Lord, give them strength and give them wisdom anointing by the God as you go and use them for your honor and glory but we call them into their calling now Father God give them the wisdom to come into the anointing that you have called on each and every one of their lives Father God in the name of Jesus Lord God and we pray that you would continue to do a mighty work in each and every one of their lives Father God give the parents the wisdom the strength and the patience to begin continue to work in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we thank you now for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Amen God is good He loves you Put your hands together. Don't forget to plead the blood every day over your sons, over your daughters, over your children. They need to be covered. Raise your hand this morning with me and everybody say, Lord, we plead the blood over all of our children. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. You may be seated this morning at this time on this first Sunday of the month. I've asked Minister uh, Teresa Harris as she'll lead us in prayer and walk us through communion for our families. So glad that you're here. So glad to see you. God loves you and everything is going to be all right. Would you just give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy in our lives. Praise the Lord, everyone, this morning. What a beautiful morning this is. Because this is the day that the Lord has made it. Yeah. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. And we thank God for this beautiful first Sunday. We're here to take Holy Communion on this morning. Praise God. I believe you have already have your sacrament with you. And I just want to just share a little bit before we stand to take it. You know, our foundation, our foundation of Holy Communion is found in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and that's where we'll be following from. I and mean, I just want to share with you on the day that we, when we take Holy Communion, we are discerning the Lord's body, the blood, and, and the death and his resurrection. Praise God. You know, when it comes down to 
taking this communion, we should take it very seriously. And don't take it lightly. But the Lord told us to do this in what? Remembrance of him. And you know our pastor and our first lady are always encouraging us to take communion daily. Take it as a family. Take it as a couple. Take holy communion. Because Why? Because it's power in it. It's, been, it's a declaration. It's a covenant that we have as being believers. Oh God, there is power through taking communion. That's why they encourage us to. Oh God, so don't delay. Don't be stagnant. Just don't take it once a month, but take it regularly. Take it daily. Take it as often and know and recognize that there's power through communion. You see, we find that in the early church, they were sick and they died prematurely by not discerning the Lord's body. But that's not us. That's not us today. We're going to discern his body. Praise God and the power that lies within it. So please stand at this time. As we start preparing for this holy communion you know just within day the last day I, it just kept coming to me Isaiah 53 and 5 that says how he was wounded for our transgressions how he was bruised for our iniquity and how the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed and I just want to let you know that what is a body without blood? A body without blood is what is dead. But praise God that through the body of Christ, praise God that things come alive. How oh, we have power through his body. So I ask you right now, if you will take that cracker of bread that represents
the blood of Jesus. That blood of Jesus. That's what this cup represents. The blood of Jesus. The new covenant. Hope you can be happy about it. The new covenant of the blood of Jesus. It is the righteous foundation for our healing. It is the righteous foundation for salvation. That's why we stand and believe for our families. That they will be saved. That they will be delivered. That they will be made whole. So I ask you right now to take this cup that represents that blood that cleansed us from all our sins. Don't look at sin in your body ever again. Don't see sin ever again. That's why we have forgiveness. Don't see it again, the saints. Don't see it whenever your shortcomings. Oh God, whatever your iniquities, we are delivered by the blood of Jesus. Now let us take the cup. Oh, don't you feel it on today? Don't you believe in his presence? Oh God, we thank you for your blood. Your blood that delivers. We thank you for your body that heals. We stand in agreement on your word. Oh God, we will continue to take communion. Oh God, we will continue to remember how you died for us. We will continue to remember how you set our souls free. We will remember this, oh God, we pray. And let us all rejoice in knowing, oh God, we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you today. Today is a very special day. It is the birthday of our one and only Pastor Alvin Simpkins. I would love to ask our ministry team to come up and we are going to pray a blessing over him. We are going to celebrate the goodness of God in his life and thank God for him. Aren't you glad to have a loving pastor? Aren't you glad to have a man who cares about you and your family? So we are excited to just celebrate him today. It's such an awesome day. And we are grateful. You know, he often says this year, I'm still here. So he's still here. You know, many have left this earth this year. It has been such a heavy weight on a pastor this year. So I'm going to ask you if you, will, if you will commit to pray for him every day. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and he needs your prayers in order to keep pressing on and to stay encouraged. So we're going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Kyle just to say a really sh short prayer, and Minister Jordan, sh short prayer, because he still has to bring the sermon, so I'm going to ask you to do that. Uh, Minister Jordan, why don't you go first? Hallelujah. I am so grateful for my father. <laughs> Amen. I am grateful. Amen. You know, I, I, I see a lot of times that people take things in life that they have for granted. And I always rile up my dad because I have a dad. You know, you should take the things that you have in life. Don't take them for granted. You should honor them. Give them their flowers while they're here. I have friends who lost their, their father this year. And I pray with them on an ongoing basis. But my dad is still here. And I just want to honor him. But also, he's a spiritual father. I know that there's some of you out there that consider him dad. Amen? Amen. I know that there's some of you out there that call him up and say, hey, I need a good word of wisdom. So he not only pours into my life, I watch how he pours into the lives of people that we come into contact with. And that helps me be a better man. That helps me be somebody and God called me to be. And so I'm thankful. I want to give you your flowers while you're here, man of God. I want you to receive your flowers while you're here. You know what I mean? And so we pray today, God, and we bless, Lord Jesus. We bless this man of God that you have given us, Lord God. We ask today, Lord Jesus, that you will hold his hands high, Lord God. That you would bless him, Lord God. Coming and going, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We honor him today, Lord Jesus. On his birthday, Lord. Many years, Lord God. I pray that you draw out of his spirit, Lord God. A new anointing.
anointing, a fresh anointing, God, a fresh power, Lord Jesus. Bless him on today, Lord God, that, Lord, he'll live out his life to the full extent, Lord Jesus. And we honor you today for him, Lord God. I ask that you bless him on the very top of his head, to the soles of his feet, God, the wherever his feet shall tread upon, God. May it be blessed by you, God. We are grateful, Lord Jesus. We ask today, Lord God, that his days go, God, that you will continue to give him more and more strength, Lord Jesus. I am grateful as a son, Lord Jesus, that he's poured into my life, Lord God. And we are grateful, Lord God, that he's poured into the lives of many, Lord Jesus, as a spiritual father, Lord God. Lord, give back to him, Lord Jesus, all that he's given out, Lord God. And we bless your holy, righteous, and magnificent name today, in Jesus' name. And everybody shout amen. God. Thank you, Lord God, that he is the head and not yes. the tail. Yes. He is above only and not beneath. Yes. Greater is he that is in him than he that yes. is in the world. Father, we pray the blood of Jesus over our pastor. Cover him by the blood of Jesus. Saturate him by the blood of Jesus. Engulf him by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our hedge of protection around him. Thank you, Lord God, that he will live out all of his days. Bless the work of his hands in the name of Jesus. Bless his mind, Lord God, and sustain his mind that he has the mind of Christ. Bless his heart, Lord God. Thank you for an indomitable spirit in the name of Jesus as he has a heart for Christ. Father, we pray over his shoulders, Lord God. The shoulders that he's carrying, the weight of the world, the weight, Lord God. Father, strengthen his shoulders in the name of Jesus. Father, bless his knees, Lord God. That he may be able to stand and run, Lord God, with the gospel of peace. Bless his feet, Lord God. Everywhere his feet, Lord God, shall walk. May be blessed and anointed of God. In Jesus' name, bless him with divine health. Cover him, Lord God, and keep him. And make your face to shine upon him. In Jesus' name, he'll live out all of his days. In Jesus' name, he'll fulfill his purpose and his plan and your plan. In Jesus' name. And the joy of the Lord is his strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. On your way out today, there will be cupcakes. Okay, we get to celebrate this year. There will be cupcakes. Also, we celebrated 38 years of marriage on Friday.
holler, Jesus. Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Great I am, the living in the valley. Jesus. The bright and the morning. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us on the old rugged cross. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 There's power in the name. Jesus. 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 Take your Bible this morning. And let's go to John to Luke chapter 8, verse number 22. Thank you for being here. Most of all, thank you for praying. Uh, God is a good God. I honor and I appreciate your prayers. We need to pray in this day. And we need God's help. Somebody say help. You're not going to make it today by yourself. You need the help of the Lord. I don't care how much money you have. Money is not the answer. We need God's help. Supernatural help. Somebody just shout help. Uh, Luke chapter 8 verse 22 and verse 23. I want to ask my wife if she'll take a minute and just read for us. What a great day it is to be uh, in the house of the Lord. Thank you for those of you that are on live stream. We honor you. Thank you for those that are on Zoom. Thank you. We appreciate you. God bless you. May the favor of the Lord rest upon your life. Luke chapter 8 verse number 22. Please now, read it this time. Now it came to pass uh -huh. on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Yes. Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. Yes. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Yes. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. Yes. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Yes. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Yes. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. Yes. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying to one another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and yes. they obey him. Amen. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. It's the hinge of our faith. The door of our faith hangs on Jesus. No other name, no other religion, no other theology, but Jesus, who died on the old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary. Thank you for Jesus. We honor him today. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Bless our time today together. Thank you for your presence. And most of all, thank you for your anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. As we go forward in this service, in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. So glad that you're here. God loves you. You have to know that all of us, my message this morning is three dimensions of every storm. All of us are going to go through some storms in our lives, but it does not mean that God is mad at us. No matter who you are, no matter what color you are, you're going to have some storms that you're going to have to sail through. And I want you to know that God will be right there with you. And he's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to leave you to the mercy of the devil. He'll be there to help you. He'll be there to walk alongside of you. He'll be there to encourage you to get through whatever you are going through. Somebody say amen. Don't worry about the storm. You just keep going forward. Somebody just say forward. And the, and the perfect will of God on that boat on this day, a storm arose. So you, can, you can be living and walking in the perfect will of God and a storm will blow up in your life. No matter who you are, you can be living for God, you can be working for the Lord, you can be doing all that you can do. You can be involved in kingdom business, you can be living for the Lord with your best and a storm will blow up in your life. It happened to Jesus. He was in the perfect will of God. He was in that perfect plan of God. And a storm blew up in his life. This morning, I want to encourage you that when storms blow up in your life, don't panic. Hold yourself together and go on through the storm. Somebody say, let's go forward. Somebody say, let's go forward. I know some of you are going through storms. I know some of you just came out of a storm. And I know that the Lord brought you out. 
Somebody say he is able. Whenever you take spiritual territory, there will always be a storm. Whenever you go into new turf, there will always be a storm. So you have to leave old things behind and just move your life what? Forward. In the midst of the storm, just move your life forward. And God is on your side. Somebody say amen. In the perfect will of God, Jesus had to go through a storm. Being called of God, being a sign of God, being on a divine assignment, being on a divine appointment, yet he was caught in the middle of a storm. And so this morning, I want to talk with you about the three dimensions of every storm that was going to blow into your life. But you got to hold it together. Somebody say, hold it together. Some families, when the storm blow in, the anger blows in. Some families, when the storm blow in, the, the criticism blows in. Some families, when the storm blow in, the, the fighting blows in. But just remain calm. You got to have peace in the midst of the storm. Somebody say, I am blessed and remain calm. Don't get into an argument. That's the devil. The storm will blow winds into your life. It's a part of life. The storms will blow rain into your life. It doesn't mean that God is mad at you when it rains on you. The storms will blow floods into your life. But you just have to remain calm. Trust in the Lord. And walk by faith and not by what? Sight. The enemy tries to use storms to destroy us. A lot of people can't handle a storm. They'll lose it mentally. Or they'll lose it emotionally. Or they'll lose it physically. But you got to be able, if you're going to walk forward in the days ahead, let me just prophesy to you, some storms going to blow into your life. If you're going to go with the Lord in the days ahead, some storms going to blow into your life. If you're going to be all that God called you to be, some storms going to blow in your life. Don't panic. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Just march ahead. Somebody say, march ahead. God uses storms to bless us. And to help us. They are never meant to destroy us. The storm on that Galilee, Sea of Galilee, there, my wife and I, when we went to Israel, we stayed right on the Sea of Galilee. Great place to watch the sunrise. On that Sea of Galilee where that storm blew up, it was never meant to destroy the work of God. It was never meant to destroy Jesus. It was never meant to destroy the disciples. God uses storms to bless our lives. The God, but the devil's goal, his job of the devil is to use the storm to destroy your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus is the one that can calm the storm. Jesus is the one that can bring peace to the storm. Jesus is the one that can give you strength to get through the storm. The old people used to say, I don't know if your mom and dad would say it. They said, baby, I'm going through the storm, but I'm going to be all right. Anybody ever heard anybody say that? I'm going through the storm, but I'm going to be all right. See, they, get, they got used to going through the storm, and God brought them out of every storm. He's going to bring your son out. He's going to bring your daughter out. He's going to bring your family out. He's going to bring you out of every storm because the Lord is on our side. Somebody say, the Lord is on our side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. Oh, say it with authority. The Lord is on my side. You wouldn't be here if the Lord wasn't on your side. The coronavirus would have taken you out. Cancer would have came and knocked on your door with a casket outside. But you are still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. Say it again, I'm still here. Say it again, I'm still here. Number one, storms carry us. Storm, the storm will carry you to the next level. To the next plateau, to the next dimension, to the next realm, and the next phase of your life. The storm is never meant to destroy you. It's going to carry you to a new land, to a new day, to a new place, to a new destiny. The storm is going to carry you. Though many people assume floods will destroy them. But you have to know the flood in the days of Noah only lasted 40 days. 
and it carried him to a new place, to a new land, to a new dimension. Somebody say, the storm's going to carry me. Genesis 7, 20, 7, 12, it says, and the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he sailed and the boat, God carried him. God is using that storm in your life to carry you. He want to move, since you wouldn't move to a next dimension, sometimes a storm will come and push you forward. Somebody said, let's go forward. God is going to use a storm that take you to another level. Second thing the storm do is it correct you. The storm will fix things in your life. Disobedience brings storms into our lives. Jonah was disobedient to God. God told him to go and pray to Nineveh, and he let his racism get in the way. He didn't want to go pray for those people. They were a different culture. They were a different color. They were a different mindset. He didn't want to go pray for them. He didn't want to go preach to them. But God said, boy, I got your number. So he went and jumped on a boat, thought that he was safe. And right in the middle of jumping on a boat, running from his assignment, a storm blew up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You better be careful when it deals with people of different color. God may have you on an assignment. I ain't got no help in this Presbyterian church this morning. But I know the Lord will use a storm. He'll use a storm to correct your life. He'll use a storm to get you back on track. And then when, when, the, when the storm came and blew into Jonah's life, the men realized something is wrong on this boat. And so they said somebody shouldn't be here. And they all of a sudden find out it was, no, it, it was, it was Jonah. So they said, Jonah, we can't have you no more. They threw him overboard. When he got overboard, the big old whale was waiting for him. What's up, Joe, baby? I've been waiting on you. Oh. And there in the whale's belly, he began to pray. He began to repent while he was still conscious. He began to call on the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. See, some of us owe God some obedience. God told you to pay the whole tithe, and you've just been given part of the tithe. I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want no pushback. But I just want you to know, when you are disobedient, a storm will blow into your life. Oh, somebody shout, help! And Jonah, God, when, when he got in that belly of the whale, he started praying. He started thanking God. He started thanking God. And then God said, okay, he touched that whale. And said, okay, now he done got it right with Mr. Whale. And go, he went up and puked him up on land. Somebody say amen. amen. Storms come in our lives, church. God's not mad at us. He's not trying to punish you. He wants you to toughen up. Somebody say toughen up. I thank God for every storm that I've been through. It made me tougher. I wouldn't have lasted as a preacher, as a pastor, if God hadn't sent certain storms into my life that made me pray at a different level, that made me fast at a different dimension, that made me call on the Lord with a new help. Somebody shout, help! Storms come, church, in our lives to carry us, to correct us. God said when you come to this house, you ought to give him some praise. But you're sitting there with your new Louis Vuitton on your, on your wallet. And you don't want to get up and give God a praise. You're sitting there with your hands, with your new nails done, and you don't want to clap your hands. You owe God praise. The Lord's been good to you. He blessed your family. He blessed your children. He blessed your babies. He blessed your health. He blessed your life. You owe God a praise. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Storms are not meant to harm us, church. Storms are meant to help us. I'm talking to somebody here. I can sense it by the Spirit of God. Storms are never meant to break us. They are meant to draw us closer to God. Storms will carry you. Storms will correct you. And number three, storms will challenge you. Storms will challenge you. Somebody say amen. Matthew 5, 45. 
Matthew 5, 45. You know the scripture. If you don't have it underlined in your Bible, please underline it. It rains on the just. It's on your screen. That you may be children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. He sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. God's not mad at you. He just wants you to correct yourself like Jonah did. Just say, I'm sorry. Just apologize. Just repent. Just get it right with God. The devil uses storms to keep you out of your spiritual territory. If this storm could have stopped Jesus and his disciples on the boat to the country of the Gadarenes, it would have stopped them. But the Bible said Jesus woke up and he rebuked the winds and he calmed the storm. Once again, the country of the Gadarenes were the Gentile areas. And Jesus didn't have to go there. But God the Father sent him there. Once again, it was a country of a different color, a different race, a different group of people. And the devil didn't want Jesus there. And you have to know people in that area didn't want him there. Somebody say amen. When you begin to pray for all, all of God's people, the devil don't like it. When God sends people in your life a different color, the devil don't like it. And he'll do everything and send a storm into your life to mess up your life. But my assignment this morning is to remind somebody that the Lord is on your side. My assignment this morning is to remind somebody that when the storms come, don't panic. Just pray now. Somebody say, pray now. Pray now. Storms will challenge you. The storms are sent by God to help us, to challenge us. Matthew 5, 45 says it rains on the just and the unjust. They cha it challenges you. In the most toughest time in your life, you are challenged. Challenge to pray more. Challenge to love more. Challenge to get closer to God. Challenge to read your Bible. Let a storm blow in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Then you'll be praying. You'll be worshiping the Lord. You'll be asking God for help. And that's all God want to do is challenge you to get closer. Look at your neighbor and say, just get closer. Somebody say, just get closer. Somebody say, just get closer. As we come out of this pandemic, God wants us to get closer. God wants us to draw, to draw near to him. God wants us to get back in church. I'm talking to somebody out there. You got your vaccine. You've been down to Walmart. You've been down to Home Depot. You've been down to Red Lobster. You've been down to Outback. But you hadn't been by God's house to just to tell him thank you. He allowed you to get through the pandemic. He, he kept you alive. You've been everywhere except the house of the Lord. Somebody ought to come by and say, Lord, thank you for keeping us alive. In the middle of the pandemic, 600,000 people are dead in these United States. But you are still here. Somebody say, I am still here. Storms are sent and they come into our lives to help us to grow up somebody say grow up. grow up nothing grows up your family like a storm oh man farmers love storms rainstorm because the seeds have been planted in the ground and the rain comes and it waters the soil and when the storm blows over the crop is beautifully green. The crop is lusciously green. And the harvest is on its way. But if it had not been for the storm, the farmer would have perished in debt, not being able to harvest his crop. We got to stop cursing the storm. We got to stop complaining about the storm. We got to stop being negative about the storm. And we just say, Lord! Thank you that I am still 
still here. I may be going through a storm, but you allow me to live. Somebody say, I am still here. They came and they were going to take care of kingdom business. And a storm blew up in your life. Whenever somebody is going through a storm, don't be critical of them. Wrap your arms around them. Call them and pray for them. Stand by them. Because you don't know what God is doing in their life. He may be carrying them to a next level. He may be correcting some of their kids. Or he may be challenging them so that when they face their Goliath, they have the guts to look them in the eye. Keep on living. You're going to have to face a devil. As a pastor, I can tell you, I had to face many demonic forces. And I just thank God that he brought me through. Somebody say amen. amen. Keep on living. You're gonna, you, a lot of people, I don't believe in that devil stuff. You ain't got to believe in it. It's real whether you believe in it or not. Just keep on living. Sooner or later, a devil going to show up in your life. And you better know how to pray. You better know how to use the word of God. For we overcome. And you better know how to say the blood. For we overcome him by the blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony. Somebody say I am. Empowered. By God. How do we overcome the storm pastor? How do we overcome the storm? Three ways. And then I'm done. Three ways. I'm done because I got to go eat on my birthday. Three ways. Three ways. To overcome the storm. My wife says she's going to take me wherever I want to go. And I know Judah and Liza are going to be there. I ain't got to worry about them. Number one. How are we going to overcome the storm? Speak to the storm. See, all some people do is curse. All some people do is say negative things about life. You got to know life and death is in the power of the tongue. And as we preach this word to you over your life today... The storm is going to get better next week. Just watch. Because we are speaking over your life. We are proclaiming over your life. We are declaring over your life. Speak to the storm. You got to tell somebody everything is going to be all right. Luke 8, 24 says, and they came to him and woke him saying, master, master, we perish in a storm. Then he arose. And rebuked the wind and the raging water, and they ceased. And there was a calm right in the midst of the storm. You got to speak to the storm. You got you to say, this is not going to do me in. I'm coming out. I declare the Lord is on my side. I declare God's not mad at me. I declare that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I'm going to declare, doctor, you can say what you want to say. God holds my life in the palm of his hand. I'm going to live out every day of my life. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to live. Somebody shall live. Speak to the storm. Yes, you may have gotten a bad diagnosis, but that's not the end of the road. That's not the end of the road. Somebody say amen. amen. That little disease is not enough to destroy you. God's going to help you. Somebody say help. Yes. So you got to pray and you got to do what Jesus did. You got to speak to that storm. He will calm the storm. And you got to pray every day and just say, I'm coming out of the storm. Little by little, I'm coming out. Day by day, I'm coming out. That's why we pray every day. You got to pray every day. Somebody say every day. Because you take turf. Somebody say turf. You just can't pray once a week. You just can't pray once a month. You just can't pray once a, every now and a quarter. You got to pray every day. Lord, I need your help. Somebody say help. How are we going to overcome the storm, Pastor? Number one, speak to that storm. And declare, it's not going to do me in. Somebody say amen. My wife had fibroid tumors. I began to say, uh, I began to declare, she's going to live and not die. God's going to bless her. God's going to help her. She's got to help me to raise these boys to be men. I can't raise them by myself. Somebody say amen. And day by day, things got better. Somebody say amen. Day by day. See, you don't have to tell everybody that you're going through a storm. God would touch their hearts 
and say, call Billy. Encourage him to go on through the storm. You ain't got to be, well, what's going on in your life? You don't need to know. I've called many people. They say, the Lord put you on my radar screen. I just called and pray for you. And they, they begin to say, Pastor, I'm going through a storm. A situation in my life ain't right. God, I need God's help. Somebody say, help. You don't need to know. Just pray now. Somebody say, pray now. Don't let the devil silence your prayer life. Don't let the devil silence your prayer life. Speak to the storm. Everything. I'm talking to somebody on live stream. Everything. It's going to be all right. The Lord is on my side. Dry your tears. Square your shoulders. The Lord is on your side. Goodness and mercy is following you. You're not going to die. It's not going to destroy your family. March ahead. Somebody say, march ahead. Call those things that be not as though they were. You got to begin to say, it's going to be all right. Somebody say, it's going to be all right. Don't give in to the health issue. Don't give in to the problem. Don't give in to the storm. You got you to gotta do what Jesus did. Speak to that storm. And say, the blood... Somebody say the blood, the blood of Jesus. You got to declare, don't speak to your husband, don't speak to your wife, don't speak to your children, speak to the storm. And they begin to declare, the Lord is on my side. We are coming out. I have favor. Somebody help me say, I have favor in my life. You got to declare, Lord, you're able. Somebody say, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir up the power. Oh. How are we going to the, get through the storm? Number one, you got to speak to the storm. I am here and I'm going to make it. Because the Lord is on my side. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my buckler. Devil, the blood is against you. The blood is against you. Number two, how do we, how do we get through the storm, Pastor? Build on the rock. Build on the rock. Now that you're going through life easy. Build your faith. Build on the rock. Build your faith. Build your protection in. That's why you give the whole tithe. I'm building on the rock. Somebody say amen. Matthew 7, 25. And Jesus said, and the rain descended. The floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. You must have your life founded on the rock. Families, you got to be founded on the rock. Men, you got to be founded on the rock. Ladies, you got to be founded on the rock. Don't listen to these false religions. Don't listen to all these people that's talking this crazy stuff about what's going on in the, in the world today. You got to stick with Jesus. Don't listen to all the unusual theology that comes out. Don't listen to what people are saying that about the Bible and about other things and about Jesus. Don't listen to that crazy stuff. Take your Bible and read the red. I believe in Jesus. Jesus said, but build upon the rock. How am I going to get through the storm, Pastor? You got to build on the rock. I'm going to be in church when the doors open. I'm going to be in church when the doors are open. Why? When I go on vacation, I'm going to find my way to a church. If I can't go in the church, I'll pull up in the parking lot in my rental car and say, Lord, I'm just checking in. I want to be a good kid. I'm just checking in. Good kids always check in. It's some bad kids that you got to call. You got to say, where you at, girl? Where you at, boy? What you doing? Well, you should have been home an hour ago. But a good kid always check in. Somebody say, I'm checking in. On live stream, you are checking in. On Zoom, you are checking in. When you came in those doors in the house of the Lord, you are checking in. Somebody say, I am. 
Just check it in. Build on the rock. How do we get through the storms of life? Speak to the storm. Stop using your words for negativity. Declare my grandbabies are going to be all right. Declare my children's going to be all right. Declare my son's going to be all right. Declare my wife is going to be all right. Declare my life is going to be all right. And then build on the rock. Build on the rock. Somebody say build on the rock. Establish and reestablish your life on the rock of Jesus. Jesus is our Savior. Somebody say, Jesus. You come to this church, I'm going to preach to you about Jesus. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. No other name whereby men must be saved. But the name of Jesus. Somebody help me say, Jesus. Build on the rock. A sure foundation. A solid foundation. A foundation of prayer. Build on the rock. Somebody say Jesus. Build on the rock. You must declare on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Can I preach to some people in here today? On Christ the solid rock we stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I'm going to preach Jesus. I'm going to preach the blood. I'm going to preach the power of God. That's all we have. In these last and evil days, somebody needs to declare, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. I am blessed. Help me say, I am blessed. Build on the rock. And don't build by yourself. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. You got to have a team on your life. Teamwork makes the dream work. Some people try to build their life by themselves. I don't need nobody. You're a liar. Somebody say amen. We need each other. In these last and evil days, I need you online. In these, in these last and evil days, we need you on Zoom. Somebody say amen. You may think you don't need us by staying home, but I, we need each other. Teamwork makes the dream work. Somebody say amen. To life, we do life what? Together. We are better together. I don't care what color you are, what side of the track you were born on. We need each other. We need red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We need God's power in our lives. Somebody shout, help. We need each other. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need each other. We need each other. Somebody say, we need each other. How, do we gonna, how, do, how are we going to get through the storm, Pastor? Number one, you got to speak to the storm. Stop speaking to your wife. Stop speaking to your son. Stop speaking to your daughter. Speak to the storm. And declare, the Lord is on my side. I'm coming out. Let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. And then number two, you got to build on the rock. The rock of Jesus. They don't want you to say Jesus anymore. They don't want you to say Jesus anymore. They don't want you to say Jesus anymore. But I'm here to tell somebody, how, number three, how do we get through the storm? How do we overcome the storm? We got to call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. When your son's in trouble, Jesus. When your daughter needs help, Jesus. When your baby is down and out, Jesus. He calmed the storm. The disciples went to him. He spoke to the storm. And he told them in Matthew to build on the rock. When everything is good in your life, you are building on the rock. You are building on the rock. And then number three, Luke 8, 23. But as they sail, he fell asleep. And there came a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And then the Bible said he arose, rebuked the wind and the raging water, and they ceased. And there was a calm. 
Somebody say amen. amen. We must go back to calling on Jesus. When I was a little boy in the church, we used to come down to the altar and just call on Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the old people would say, purge him, Lord. Purge him, Lord. And I would say, Lord, please don't purge me. <laughs> I'm just calling on Jesus. I know there's power in his name. It's a name above every name. At the name of Jesus, my Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Don't be ashamed to call on Jesus. There's something about that name. There is something about that name. Demons tremble. Every knee shall bow. Somebody say, Jesus is a mind regulator. It's a heart fixer. It's a mind regulator. He'll calm your mind. He'll calm your heart. Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Mary's baby. The lily of the valley. The bird in the morning star. The author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody help me. Call on Jesus. The answer to all your problems. The answer to all your questions. The answer to every situation in your life. He's all riches. He's all blessings. Jesus. He's awesome and amazing. He is the son of the living God. He is the burden bearer. He is the heaven old carrier. Somebody help me. Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jehovah Jireh. Your provider. Jehovah McKittish. He is our help. Somebody say, help. Somebody say, help. Go through the storm. Go through the rain. Go through the flood. Go through the wind. The Lord is on your side. Goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Hallelujah. Jesus, call his name. Jesus, call his name. Jesus, call his name. The king of Job, the king of glory, the bright in the morning star, the rose of Sharon, Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus, put your hands together. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, stand up on your feet and help me call it. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Mary's baby, Jesus, my comforter, my deliverer, my burden bearer. I am blessed, Jesus, Jesus, help us, Jesus, help us, Jesus, we're going through the storm. I'm coming out of the storm. You are coming out of the storm. Jesus is on board. Jesus is on board. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Raise your hands all over the house. Jesus. How are we going to get through the storm, Pastor? How are we going to get through the storm? How are we going to get through the storm? Number one, number one, if you're going to get through the storm, you got to speak to that storm. Stop cursing one another. Stop saying negative things to one another. Number two, you got to call. Number two, you got to call on Jesus. Build on a rock. Somebody say build on a rock. Somebody say build on a rock. Jesus. As we go forward in our society, you're going to see less and less of churches and people that are calling on Jesus. But as long as the Lord let me hold this microphone, we're going to call on Jesus. We're going to plead the blood. Somebody say the blood. 
it still works. Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Raise your hands all over the house. I sense the presence of the Lord. Set your elbow all the way up. Some of you are going through a storm. But I want you to know that the Lord is on board. You're going through a storm, but I want you to know the Lord is on board. Somebody say amen. Speak to the storm. Speak to the storm. And declare, I'm coming out. Celebrate like the farmer. Go out and clap your hands in the rain. Sing in the rain. Dance in the rain. Worship him in the rain. If you can't worship in the rain, you'll never worship him in the sunshine. If you can't worship him in the rain and in the storm, you'll never be able to truly worship him in the sunshine. When the storm is blowing into your life, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. We worship your Lord. We praise your Lord. We magnify your Lord. The storm let sing in the rain. Dance in the rain. And don't give up. Somebody say amen. How are we going to get through the storm, Pastor? We're going to speak to the storm. We're going to build on the rock. We're going to build on the rock. We're going to build on the rock. And then we're going to call on Jesus. Lord, I need your help. Stretch your hand all the way up. Some of you are going through a storm. On live stream, you're going through a storm. And I declare you're going to get through that storm. Dance in the rain. Somebody put it on screen for the pastor. Tell them to dance in the rain. Dance in the rain. Dance in the rain. When I was going through a storm, there are times I had to dance in the middle of my tears. But God was there. Somebody say amen. Stretch your elbow all the way up. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, teach me how to get through the storm and dance in the rain. Say one more time. Say, Lord, teach me how to get through the storm and dance in the rain. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I honor you, Lord, for all your help in my life. Would you excuse me for a minute? I want to pray for some people. Marva, bring your whole family. Stand over here. Young man right here, right in front of you, Chris. Young man right here. Come on, come to the altar. John and Esther, come and stand with me. Pastor Kyle, come and stand with me. I just want to pray for you. I don't know what's going on in your life, but there's a light over you. I don't know what's going on in your life, but God is with you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. God is on your side. And I just want you to know that if you're going through a storm, I don't know what's going on in your life, but everything's going to be all right. Stephanie, come and stand with us. Come on, Stephanie. Come on, Stephanie. Stand right over here. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. God is a good God, and he loves you, and everything is going to be all right. We do life together. Somebody say we do life together. Somebody say we do life together. Somebody say we do life together. We do life together. Somebody, when you hurt, I hurt. When you hurt, I hurt. I sense it by the spirit of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. God is on your side and everything is going to be all right. Come on, Michael. Just come and stand with me right here. Just come and stand with me. I just want to pray for you. On my birthday, let me honor the Lord. Let me honor the Lord. Let me honor the Lord. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. He loves you. And everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Put your arm around somebody and say, go on through the storm. Come on, faith. 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 I'm sorry. I just got to obey the Lord. I just want to be a good preacher. I don't want to be a bad preacher. I don't want to be a disobedient preacher. I just want to be a good preacher. Come on. Come on, just stand with me. God is on your side. Baco, bring your wife. Bring your wife and just stand behind them. Bring your wife and just stand behind them. God is a good God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Thank you for coming down. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I see God working in your life. And I just want to be honored but to the Lord and just pray for you that everything's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. 
Somebody say it's going to be all right. Heather, would you bring your son? Heather, would you bring your son? Heather, would you bring your son? Come on, just bring your son. Just bring your son. I just want to pray for you. Lord, these are your people. These are your people. These are your people. Would you raise your hands all over the house? Those of you on live stream, I know that you're going through the storm, but everything is going to be all right. The storm is going to carry you. It's going to correct you and it's going to challenge you. Call on the name of Jesus. Father, whatever is going on in their lives, I ask you to bless them. Calm the storm and bring them through. Bring them through. And everything is going to be all right. We pronounce your blessing. You said pray for them. So today I honor you. I pray for these, your people at this altar. I pray for them that you will encourage them, that you will bless them, that you will help them, that you will empower them to get through the storm. Somebody help me say, I am. Say with authority, I am. Coming out. Say it again, I am. Coming out. Everybody say with me, say, Lord, help us to get through every storm. We're going to dance in the rain. We're going to dance in the rain. We're going to dance in the rain. We're going to sing in the rain. The Lord is on our side. The Lord is our help. The Lord is our shield. Bless your people. Empower them. In the depths of their spirit, empower them. And we plead the blood. Somebody help me say the blood. Somebody help me say the blood. Somebody help me say the blood. The blood over their life. The blood over their family. The blood over them. The blood of Jesus. Would you stretch your hand all over the house? And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I declare victory on the other side of this storm. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, I declare victory on the other side of every storm that comes into my life. I am blessed. Would you give the Lord a hand clap? Just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm coming out of the storm. Oh, I'm coming out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy! Somebody holler, joy! Somebody say, joy! Joy coming in the morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Turn around and put your arms around somebody and say everything is going to be all right. Just tell them everything is going to be all right. Oh! It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, Faith. It's going to be all right, Stephanie. It's going to be all right, Minister Mark. It's going to be all right, John. It's going to be all right. We coming out. It's going to be all right. The Lord is on our side. Goodness and mercy is following us. Wherever we go, the Lord is on our side. We are blessed. Somebody stretch your elbow all the way up and say, I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all your help in our lives today. In Jesus' name I pray. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God loves you. God has a plan for you. And just because you're going through a storm doesn't mean that the Lord's not there with you. The storm is going to make you stronger as a couple. The storm is going to make you stronger as a family. The storm is going to enhance your prayer life. The storm is going to carry you to the next level. Because the Lord is on your side. Somebody say amen. Would you just give the Lord a hand clap for the word of the Lord? The grass wither, the flower fades, sir. But the word of God will stand forever. Somebody say amen. In the perfect will of God, Jesus went through a storm. And you're going to have to go through some too. Doesn't mean that God is upset with you. It's just a part of life. Somebody say amen. Would you put your hands together and, and just give the Lord a hand clap for my wonderful wife as she come and make an announcement about cupcakes uh, afterwards. On my birthday, you know, we have some cupcakes. I want to thank Minister Marvin, her team, for uh, just getting some cupcakes. So on your way out, please take one. 
Even if you give it to the dog, take one. No, don't give it to the dog. <laughs> These are really, really good. So we, we just want to bless you. And on your way out, make sure you get one and enjoy it on your way home. Amen. God is a good God. And he loves you. And he has a plan for your life. Somebody say amen. For those of you, I want you to put your loved ones at the top of your prayer list. The enemy want to steal your family. But God is going to bless them. You got to keep praying for them and encouraging them and blessing them. Somebody say amen. I have one goal these days, I, well, really two. I want to pastor my family, and I want to pastor you as, my, as, a, as a member of this wonderful church. That's it. You know, as I get my, have a birthday, I just, you know, when you, the older you get, the real, you realize what's important in life. What's important in life is I want to pastor my family, and I want to pastor you, the people of God. Somebody say amen. That's it. Somebody say amen. And if you'll just receive it, your life is going to be blessed because I pray for you every day. And I pray for your loved ones. The list that you've given me, I carry that with me. And I pray with them and pray for them. And God, I know God is working in their life. They may not have turned around all the way, but they are turning around. Somebody say amen. And just, just keep praying for them. And, put, and just know, put them at the top of your list and pray every day. Somebody say amen. Would you stand with me this morning as we pray for them? And everybody stretch your elbow all the way up. And everybody say, Lord, we declare that you will draw our loved ones closer to you. Everybody say, Lord, thank you. Write their names in the Lamb's book of life. Save them. Somebody say, save them. Somebody say, save them. In the name of Jesus. And rebuke the devourer from their life. And Father, we thank you for every name in the name of Jesus. And we just ask you to bless them by the power of the Holy Ghost. And most of all, save them. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. We're not going to call their names today. We'll call them on Wednesday. But save them. Save every one of these in the name of Jesus. By your supernatural power, save them and deliver them, Lord. And everybody say with me, stretch your elbow up and say, Lord, I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. I am saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. I am empowered by God. Thank you, Lord, for all your help. Somebody say, save them. Come on, say it again. Save them. Say it again. Save them. Save them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness. You may be seated in the presence of a holy and living God. We love you. We appreciate you. And we know God's best is on its way into your life. And I just want to say again, thank you for giving to the Lord. God loves you. And God's going to take care of you. And God's going to help you. Somebody just shout help. Just shout help. God's going to take care of you. God's going to bless you. God's going to empower your life. Just walk, keep walking with the Lord and don't turn around. Somebody say, don't turn around. Don't measure your life based upon your friends. You don't know how they're living. Based upon the word of God, that's how you measure your life. Somebody say amen. God loves you and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. And I want to say thank you to those of you that give. The Bible is very clear. And when it says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, he said, give, and I'll give it back to you. Luke 6, 38, I'll give it back to you a thousand times more. Press down, shaken together, and running over. God says, I'll give it back to you. So I want to encourage you to be a Christian that give. Support the work of the Lord going forward in the days ahead. Somebody say amen. And when you give to Emmanuel Christian Center, we support other ministries, and we want you to know that it doesn't go into a black hole. Somebody say amen. We're helping Pastor Vaughn build his church in the Philippines. Somebody say he got the walls up, he's putting the windows in, and one day we'll go there and celebrate with him. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. We're helping uh, one of our pastor friends back east with an anti-abortion center. So when you give to uh, the house of the Lord here at Emmanuel Christian Center, you are helping to save a little baby. Somebody say amen. We give and support uh, Shepherd's Heart Ministry, Pastor Larry Russell, to help pastors that are struggling, that are fail, and that the enemy has attacked and is destroying. Somebody say amen. 
we do all we can to help his ministry, to help pastors. Somebody say amen. And because we have no place to go. When the pastor hurt, where does he go? He can't come to you. You put all his business in the street. And you won't even listen to him anymore. You say, he, that pastor got a problem. Somebody say amen. There are places where pastors can go and get help. Somebody say help. So I just want you to know, and I want to thank you for giving. Those of you online that gave, thank you. And now those of you that's going to give, thank you. And those of you that's on Zoom, thank you. You can give by text. You can give by, you can give by the website. You can give by dropping it off at church through the mail slot. Or you can give by just mailing it in. God will give it back to you a thousand times more. I'm so encouraged as I come out of this pandemic because the Lord has helped us. The Lord brought us through. Last year, the beginning, the end of February, the beginning of March, we didn't know what was going to happen. But as we walked through the months, April, May, March, June, July, August, September, October, the Lord walked right beside us and he brought us through. The lights didn't get turned off. The water didn't get stopped. We paid every bill that we signed on that we owe. Somebody say amen. And to you, I just want to say thank you. To you, I just want to say thank you. Will you give the Lord a hand clap that he put money in your hand? Give the Lord a hand clap that he put money in your hand. You're not broke. Somebody say, I'm not broke. I am blessed. Stand up on your feet. I want to pray for you. If you hold up, before you stand, this state remains seated. I should come forward, give everybody an envelope. Everybody on this first Sunday, give something. Even if you got to borrow something from Billy Bob in the back. Everybody give something. Everybody give something. Everybody give something. Everybody gives something. Everybody gives something. Everybody gives something. If you got to borrow a hundred dollars from your neighbor, give something. They got a hundred dollar bill in their hand. Somebody say, "Man," in their purse or in their wallet. Give something. Everybody gives something. Not as a debt you owe, but as a seed. Somebody say, "Seed." So if the rain comes in your life, it waters your seed, and you got a harvest. Somebody say, "I got a harvest." The farmers celebrate the storms. Nothing the farmer loves more after he plants his crop than to see a big rainstorm come because it's watering his seed. When you sow your seed today, God's going to bless your life. Somebody say amen. He says, I rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'll open unto you the windows of heaven, plural, windows of heaven. And I'll pour you out a blessing that there'll not be room enough to receive. Would everybody just give something on your way out? You can give it to the usher on your way out. But raise your hands. Let us all stand. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. You are the most important people in my life. Other than my family, you are the most important people in my life. I pray for you every day. I ask God's blessing over your life. You are faithful. You are stood with us. You have been there for us. And I'm just so excited. Somebody say amen. I don't have a grim report that the doors are closing. I say that the doors are not closing. God is blessing us. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Raise your, hold your gifts up to the Lord. Hold your, just hold them up to the Lord. Father, I pray over your people. As they give into your kingdom, I pray that you'll bring them through every storm. I pray that you will empower them. Empower their investments. And help them with their home. Help them to pay off that home. Help that single mom to get into our own house. Get out of that apartment. Buy our own place. Bless them, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we need money in America. And we just want to say we need your help. We need money to pay our bills. We need money to build our credit. We need money to raise our families. So, Lord, we want to say thank you. For everyone online that gives, I ask you to bless them. A thousand times more. According to your word in Deuteronomy 111. You said I'll bless you a thousand times so much more. And I will bless you. Father thank you. As they sow seed into the ground today. I pray. That it will come back. A thousand times more. First the blade. Then the ear of the corn. Then the full harvest will manifest in their life. I pray over every business that you'll bless them, that you'll empower them, that you'll help them, every business. And we just thank you, Lord. Give them new contracts. Give them new employees. Give them new property to house their business in. 
those that don't have a business. I pray that you'll give them one. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for all your help. Somebody just help me shout, help! Somebody help me shout, help! Super natural help. In Jesus' name we pray. May their income today be their tie tomorrow. I pray for the million dollar miracle to manifest in their lives. It is nothing for you to give your people the million dollar miracle. Not to go to Vegas a party, not to go to the beach and get drunk, but Lord to put you first and to win souls for the kingdom of God. We receive it. Somebody stretch your elbow all the way up and say, I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, Amen. God loves you. Everything is going to be all right. Would you welcome Pastor Kyle tonight, this morning, as he come and pronounce the blessing over our lives. You are blessed. You are so blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. You are so blessed. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. Appreciate what you have. Celebrate every day. And just know, no matter what you eat, if it's soup. I ate soup last night. And man, it was good. By myself. My wife was there. But man, it was good. Celebrate whatever you have. Don't complain. Don't fuss. You go into a storm, speak through the storm. Speak to the storm. And keep on building on a solid foundation. And then call on Jesus. And let nobody silence you. But you're welcome, Pastor Kyle Smeller, as he pronounced the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And they shall put my name upon the children of Emmanuel. And I will bless them. Father, Father, Father. Thank you so much, Lord God, for this word right now in this time and in this season. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord God, that you would take the seeds that have been sown today, water them, and make them flourish, Lord God. Father, as we leave the church today, Lord God, help us to dance, Lord God, in the midst of the rain. Remind us to give you praise and glory. Remind us to worship you and praise you all day long in the name of Jesus. Remind us that there's no weapon that's formed against us that shall be able to prosper. In Jesus' name, remind us that you are the God of the storm. And there's no storm that you cannot overcome. There's no storm that you cannot calm. There's no storm that you cannot cease because you are God and you are God alone. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you for this encouragement to move forward. Thank you, Lord God, for this encouragement to fight. Thank you for this encouragement, Lord God, from you. And we love you, Lord, letting us know that you are with us and that you love us. And we love you right back. In Jesus' name, I pray the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. The mind of Christ, a hedge of protection around us, guard us and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Happy birthday, Pastor.